when we talk about our journeys or our narratives, you know, in life and so forth, we kind of try and make sense of them in a way that says, well, I did that and then I did that and then I did that and then that happened and then that happened. It's not like that, it's chaos. You know, our life's journey is chaos. <laughs> there is no rhyme, nor reason, nor yeah. framework, nor structure. It's just our approach and our way of managing those things and how and our feelings that allows us to move on, to learn and to grow. A warm welcome to our spirited life the broadcast for women who simply won't settle. This season, we're talking about life in our third act, indeed owning our third act. And let me tell you, all the women I have in this season are truly owning their third act. And today I'm delighted to welcome Julia Goodman, who's a performance coach, author and speaker, and CEO of Personal Presentation Limited, and what a journey she's had to develop all of those. Julia was an actor and a producer and director for 27 years. She enjoyed early stardom in The Brothers. I remember watching her in that. We were both quite a lot younger. And she's appeared widely on screen in productions such as The Lotus Eaters, Inspector Morse, love that Jules, Coronation Street, The Bill, Those Glory Glory Days and Beyond Reason. We could probably remember most of those. With Kate O'Mara, she founded the British Actors Theatre Company and played leading Shakespearean roles all over the world. Wow, Jules, that is quite... <laughs> <laughs> a, a profile absolutely fantastic so when did you have the idea for personal presentation in the bath great well in 1989 I'd just come back from playing Lady Macbeth all over Europe and in extraordinary situations I can tell you <laughs> and uh, it was an amazing opportunity and it was the it was kind of a pinnacle of that journey that we take in any sort of uh, career where we go, I can do this, I can do it. Now that to me is that place where you, you accept that you can do something. It doesn't mean you're always confident, doesn't mean you're not nervous about certain things mm -hmm. and everything else, but it's that recognition that you've done it. Now, I'm one of those people that has uh, a strong ability to visualize. And I, whenever I've been in a difficult spot or a, a, a worrying place or a frightening place, I can visualize what it looks like or what I look like, even down to the clothes I'm wearing and where I am, uh, say in four or five years time, because I know that I'm on a journey that I want to get to another place. And what I realized when I had that kind of feeling of, acceptance I didn't have anything more to prove to myself hmm. in terms of playing the big Shakespeare and roles mm -hmm. doing all the television and stuff that I'd done and thinking yeah I know how to do this I can do it great I then realized I was a kind of at a crossroads the crossroads for me has always been okay now where am I going and I look to the left and I look to the right and I look forward and I go hmm so what am I getting from the life that I've got now? I was divorced. I was living on my own with uh, two children who needed me, of course, and I needed to earn some more money. So there was a certain amount of need uh, financially there, which is saying, uh, as a good actor, you're probably doing six months of the year with good paid work. And I was, I'd been very lucky. I'd had a lot of television film and mm -hmm latterly the Shakespeare. So I kind of come to the end of a bit of a road and I thought, well, I do need something to support our journey forward with me, with the kids on my own and so forth. And, I, and when I wasn't working, I was on 90 pounds a week social security, which is the lot of the actor. And it, I was bored with that. It wasn't enough and I wasn't getting enough pleasure out of the work, meaning Having played some of these great Shakespearean roles, you realize, as most of us do as actors, that 
it's the it's it's the pinnacle of our abilities and so forth and if you can't be in that place of great work rehearsing practicing your art and your skill as much as you can uh, say in a year then the rest of it is fairly drossy yeah mm. so I thought well I've done enough and if I'm not going to have the chance of playing these roles maybe more than once or twice in a year uh, I don't know that I'm playing anymore <laughs> <laughs> So I, had, so, I, so I finished the tour, I was in the bath, I was lying there in this cool, rather sort of semi-darkness, I had candles around the bath, and that wonderful place where you can get quite creative, where your brain is, um, is dumped down all the, 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 the dross in it, and you're just in that meditative state, I do recommend it to anybody, and I suddenly had this idea, I thought, where can I, how can I swim in a slightly different pond? but taking all my skill, my experience, my understanding with me, not going off into another career or a different thing, but just how can I transfer this and transport it into another pond and swim in another pond? Mm -hmm. And that's when I had the idea. I thought, how can I help people perform themselves using all the skills, the techniques, the psychology of the performance art? And that's when I had the idea. That was That's it. absolutely brilliant because uh, I tend to have my best ideas in the early hours of the morning. So I guess it is that darkness when you're not, um, nothing else is inputting into you. Yeah. And so um, I tend to keep a pen and paper by my bed. Um, but I love the fact that you have taken your skill and your innate skill, your gift and your learned skills, and then decided to, to put those skills into something that would help other people because one of my main areas that I work with is low self-esteem mm. um, and lack of confidence and you and I in our own ways are helping people develop those because I actually believe that living a life with no self-worth isn't living a life at all you're simply just existing mm. and so what happened three years after you when you were on 90 pounds a week social security and in the next three years what happened three years later okay well based on the principle that my father taught me two things he taught me when I asked him about business because he was an artist a painter a, a wonderful painter and I've got his paintings all around my home Fabulous. Um, but he also ran uh, aligned businesses so creative businesses that were to do with the art world he also was a business person and I said well I'm starting up my idea what is the advice you give me dad and he said two things first of all keep it small <laughs> and now and now I realize exactly what he meant by that and that's another story but we'll come to that maybe later and the other thing was um if you if you've still got a business in three years you've got a business because most businesses go out under three years right despite the great idea and everything else and I'm mm. sure that's happening a lot to the young people at the moment mm. but it's an experimental place mm. if under five years over five years you should be making some profit so in my three years after I started with nothing just this idea and I fortunately met someone who was a, a woman who'd been um working at the BBC and she she needed a part-time job and she came and worked with me at Canalot Studios where I had a tiny tiny little space in someone else's office and she said um, I worked, talked her through my idea and everything else and she said yeah but you haven't got a product okay I haven't got a product right what do you mean by that <laughs> something you can sell <laughs> Right. Okay. Rather than a service, you mean. Exactly. So yeah. then I spent nearly four years walking up and down the garden with my dictaphone and going through what I knew was the, the, the communication process as I understood it and knew it and how I would transform it to transfer it to other people. And she would then go back to the office and type, you know, typewriter is what we had then, typewriter. Mm -hmm. typewriter. I remember. Let me go on to the next bit. And every time I got the chance to work on somebody because I put my idea out my visualization my ability to sell my work and my feelings my understanding about it was 
always good and I did it everywhere and then I thought oh god I've got to have something that actually follows this up so I would take someone on one person got an introduction whatever and I'd start working with them and I'd go a quarter of the way into the work and think I don't know what comes next what comes next oh oh my god oh I know I know and then I'd sort of do the next bit so it was by osmosis and it was sort of organic mm -hmm. as I started to put the methodology together so in three years I had believe it or not three maybe four three four years I turned over my first million wow Mm. And that is a fantastic result. And how much do you believe that belief is a major part in that, as well as the, the skills and the product and everything, just keeping on going? You've got to have a passion that you connect with and that you emotionally feel good about. Yeah. Now, the thing about the actor is that part, uh, people think it's all about ego and all the rest of it. Well, it isn't. An awful lot of it is not about ego. It's about getting approval. It's about getting acceptance. But it's also about giving. Okay. And the giving bit to give to an audience, to help people go away with another understanding or, or, or emotional connection. And I think it was one of the great uh, Greek um, uh, writers who said that the, the real theatre, which is what we miss so much now, is a cathartic experience. Yeah, for all. Light, for all. You yeah. feel it. It's not the same with television or Zoom or anything mm, else. It is an actual that. feeling that you get and you walk out with it and it helps you in your life. So, and in a way, was, sorry, Julia, in a way, like, that's <laughs> the vibe. That's the vibration that we talk about when we're out and about amongst people. It's, it's atmosphere, isn't it? And That's it's energy feeling. and you feel physically touched and emotionally yes. engaged and connected. Yes, yes. And it's the most extraordinary feeling. And mm -hmm. that is something that you are doing if you're in the theatre and lucky to be in a job doing it. You're giving out of yourself on a nightly basis. Even though you're playing a character, because one of the things I'm always, I, I say, because I was doing a film with Tim Pickett Smith and we were talking about this because I was running, I was starting to run the company at the time I was making the film with him. And he said, well, the thing is, you see, Julia, that good actors use an awful amount, lot amount of themselves to inform the part, to make it real. Mm -hmm. Not so good actors don't find that easy. So they yeah. don't. So they don't share or bring in or did go into themselves to find what it is that connects us to that character. Yeah. And I knew that my work had to do that. It had so, to help people do it for themselves, if you like. Yes. Well, that leads us nicely on talking about the acting and the feeling and the giving mm -hmm. into. Um, I have a question for you. In what is your you brand coaching? We're going to come across that in a minute. But in what is your U-Brand coaching methodology rooted? In. <clears throat> okay, exactly that. Very good question. So when we're using personal disclosure, which is opening ourselves up to share some of our understanding of ourselves and the world to other people, which is kind of what I was just saying there, you are sharing on a nightly basis uh, human behavior and qualities and understanding that's coming from your, your well, if you like, of experience and information. It has to, otherwise you can't really connect it and make it real. When you're doing that, um, you're, you're giving of yourself and that gives you the energy. And it's the energy as I just, there's a, there's a lovely quote here from Judy Dench, which, um, do you want it now? Oh, let's see it. Yes. Okay. Because so. actually I hear you've written a book and have just produced a series of mark video masterclasses. So we can come on to those in a minute. And indeed. So I've used one of her quotes in our book, which I love, and it's exactly what uh, I'm talking about. And there it is. Can you read it there? I will read it. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love the picture. Uh, fear generates in you a huge energy. You can use it. It's like petrol. I love that. Dame Judy. Right. 
Wow. So it's our fuel. It's our fuel. But what stops us doing that a lot of the time is fear of ourselves, fear of um, getting not approval, not being appropriate. Yes, and that's the same as the creatives. Yeah, all those things. Mm -hmm. And if you once you tap into that, you've got something that's like it's a it's a golden um, fuel. It's absolutely extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Learning to use it and do it appropriately and all the rest of it is what we teach. And that is teaching people how to use more of themselves with skill. So we have the skill, the understanding, the structure, the ability to put everything together and help you express and connect in a much more real and authentic way. Once you've got that and you understand it and you're not frightened of it because the wonderful payoff is that when you're doing it, it's like me doing it now and you're doing it, I'm sure, is you look great. <laughs> you look real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're not in that sort of closed down. Yeah. Place, that it's about place. authenticity and your yeah. confidence in, in yourself. In yourself. Exactly. And going, back to, going back to your first question was, it's about self-belief and the ability to project that. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine I, to have confidence, but if you don't know how to express or project it, mm -hmm. then we become unwell, we become mm -hmm. detached, we become frustrated, and we're not read well. You no, know, we don't know what's really going on with us. Yeah, yeah, and that can have major impact, as you say, on our health, on, on everything. Mm -hmm. um, so we touched upon the book, um, and I know... Um, Sorry, yeah. I'll just show it to you. There, oh, yes. There's fantastic <laughs> manual of confidence. Oh. And I'm, I'm just so proud of it. I'm not tr really trying to promote it at this point. I I'm know. proud of it. Yes. Well, really actually, because that time. book, it wasn't just the time it took to put that book together and to write the words. Mm. The years oh. of experience, pain, joy, everything of life that have gone into that final result, which then you are sharing to the world is fantastic because um, I think possibly a bit like when you're up on stage, you getting that book out to the world. Um, I've I heard on the radio recently that the serotonin levels of the giver are greater than those and of the receiver. receiver. <laughs> which I love that. So well, the master classes, I am super excited about these because I, I, I know what they're about. Um, and so why have you done the masterclasses? Why now? Well, because <clears throat> going back to the journey to the book and getting it down and so forth, when we talk about our journeys or our narratives, you know, in life and so forth, we kind of try and make sense of them in a way that says, well, I did that and then I did that and then I did that and then that happened and then that. It's not like that. It's chaos. You know, our life's journey is chaos <laughs> there is no rhyme nor reason nor yeah. framework nor structure it's just our approach and our way of managing those things and how and our feelings that allows us to move on to learn and to grow and if you then put it into a book you are sort of beginning to make sense of it although this book is not about my life there's little bits of it it's about the work and it's for other people. Um, that's another book I might write one day. <laughs> Although I'm, the things I might say in it might upset quite a lot of people. So I'll have to. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but the, so that's one thing. And then <clears throat> it was Mark, uh, my partner's idea, who's the MD of the company, to say, as we go forward in the world that we're in at the moment, and we're getting to an age where we're not going to be able to give as much energy to mm -hmm. the coaching, to the work, because it's full time for us. We have a team, as you know, and they're brilliant, but they're younger and they're getting on with it, which is great. Why don't we have something online that would support us being asleep while we earn a bit? Fabulous. <laughs> so I thought, yeah, you've got a point there, Mark. That's a very good idea. So we had this idea three years ago, three years ago, and then COVID came along and we did it. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. We actually did the book and the masterclasses to support all the work that we do, to help it go to a bigger audience of uh, young people on the street, anybody that needs that 
boost of confidence to mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. um, there's a bit of filming there that will help them and they can see it demonstrated and actually see the work um, yeah. and take them through the, the master yeah. Yeah. And we actually did it because COVID helped us do it. We were locked up at home. We put yeah. a Marty in the tent, in the, in the garden. Yeah. We had a very small, a couple of friends who are professional filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And you were there say, sometimes taking yeah. photographs and yeah. we managed to do it. And it goes out and is launched uh, probably in January now, I think. Probably. Super. Along with the book. Yeah. And I think the timing is, you know, the timing was always going to be uh, an important element. And now that we are have moved so much into the digital online world, mm -hmm. uh, it's a new sort of community, isn't it? It's a new way of reaching people. And what you've done with your online masterclasses is just to allow people to uh, to be their very best online when they're communicating with people. Because it's a very different way, as you said before, about the energy is different. It's a different way of communicating through a screen than literally face to face. Well, it's interesting, it's actually because one of my coaches said, it does make you laugh. She said, you know, usually when we were uh, bringing people into our studios in Notting Hill, <clears throat> the first thing people would do would see the camera in the corner and go, oh, God, you know, I'm going to be filmed. And then when we got them up to do a, a little bit to the camera, just to get a, a sense of where they were uh, and how they were performing. And it's usually not great. They go, oh, yes, but you see, I never, ever have to perform to a camera. <laughs> And you go, and now you do all yeah. the time. <laughs> and that suddenly made us realise that our other skills, you know, which we learned at drama school and we've been doing, was performing what we call performing into the void. There is nothing much coming back. We had to do that when we were filming, when we yeah. were te doing television, mm -hmm. you're filming, to an you're, you're, you're performing to an in inanimate uh, object. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be beyond the camera. You have to perform beyond the camera. Yes. To the lens. Yes, yes. Um, how much does humour come into either survival or coping or literally just for the fun of it? I can remember not that long ago during lockdown when we had our Bowie meetings and we all decided that we would wear hats. <laughs> now you, Julia, decided to wear the most beautiful pair of old bloomers on your head excuse me they were agent provocateur they certainly oh. were quite old oh. <laughs> they were agent provocateur and i wore them on my head yeah. well they were very beautiful but what motivated you to, to, do, to it. do that just because of your naughty sense of humor or was there something else i've always been i spent an awful lot of time outside the headmistresses who was a nun's <laughs> office not because i was deliberately naughty but i was mm. always been um curious and ebullient and I would just put my hand up I mean one of the great stories I have always to tell is that when I was about 15 sister Lawrence came into the uh classroom and we were all sitting there and I'm sitting in the front because I'm short-sighted and can't see anything always a bad place to sit <clears throat> and she said um right hands up who has kissed a boy okay <laughs> <laughs> nobody else nobody else and I knew I was the only one who had only kissed a boy so I realized then that I put my head above the parapet yes yeah. and on an instinctive basis and it has got me into trouble quite a lot of time so the <laughs> naughtiness for that was mm. somebody said um let's all wear funny hats let's have some lovely hats you know well I'm not a hat person I don't particularly like the image of women going into the glam hat business. or whatever. And I said, oh, I really don't want to do that. And they all said, oh, come on, Julia, you've got to take part. And I went, OK, so that's why I wore the knickers. And that's a rather lovely story, actually, because um, by being urged to take part in something, mm. and if it's not really you, then you can still take part but you can adapt it in a way and I think that's actually a really good lesson for somebody don't feel forced into doing something that's no. not you but adapt you, have a choice. you can say no 
yeah. or you say I don't want to um, make people feel uncomfortable or whatever but mm -hmm. I'll do it in my way and that's yes I do it my way mm -hmm. so um, what motivates you to begin these new things to evolve to keep growing because you started your business 30 years ago age 44 mm. um and that must have been quite tough was it <laughs> well we were right in the middle or beginning to be in the middle of a huge recession okay so suddenly I had I couldn't sell my house I was on my own with two kids uh in order to pay back the bank um, a quite a lot of money because as you remember the interest rate mm -hmm. went up and up and up they were 13 percent yes. so anything I'd earned in the year or had borrowed on getting a little bit more mortgage on my house because that's how a lot of us did it you know we take out a bit more mortgage we could live on that and when I wasn't working and I wanted to do things to the house etc I, I had that ready um, level of, of, of cash you know to do it with and suddenly that all stopped so I was left owing then 50 grand to the bank. Can you imagine the terror? Mm -hmm. Not being able to sell my house because no, nobody could. Were you still a single mum at this point? Yeah. You were. Yeah. 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 So I was doing all that. And I used to go to the bank manager and sort of sit there pleading and saying, but he did think the idea I had, which he was, I was talking to about, was a great idea. And I remember going in and doing a little bit of work with his tellers, you know, at the time, and it was hysterical. Mm -hmm. So I had his support. But the bank just kept on raising the money, raising the money. And I just think, what am I going to do? This is awful. So I'd wake up every morning in utter terror. Oh. And that's when I thought, I've got to have another way out of this. I've got to do something else. And that's basically combined with coming back from playing Lady M. I realized that I had to take another, another road. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't go through that anymore that kind of uh, worry and anxiety. It, it's terrifying, absolutely terrifying. So sometimes, yes, it's like um, Judy Dench's quote that yeah. fear is a great driver. Exactly um, that, it was a great driver. And I just, cause somebody said once that I was watching uh, a lecture at Imperial College one day and I went to, to see him speak. And he said, there are two motivations for um, money, fear, greed. Ah. Uh, well, yeah, I and thought it's yeah. As that. it was just fear, just total fear. Yeah, yeah. And that yeah. pushed me, pushed me, pushed me, pushed me. Yeah. So a bit I, like now, a bit like now. Yeah. Well, I would. So I would say then that you do believe that learning is for life. Mm. But why would you believe that? Because when I get to those points, those crossroads, as I talked about, that it isn't just fear or greed or anything like that. It's also okay. I've done that. I've always been very curious. I want to know how the world works. I want to know what I can do next. I need to achieve. I need to feel that I'm work moving into another space, which is going to be interesting and, and, and uh, engaging and full of vitality. And you have to be frightened. I mean, there's a, a lovely quote by, um, oh God, who is it? Uh, oh yes, Georgia. O'Keefe, the American artist, yes, who says, I've always been terrified of everything, but it's never stopped me doing anything. Anything. Powerful. Very powerful. And I also think that while in our bodies we grow older, learning mm. and curiosity keeps us young. I feel younger and younger perhaps more wise alongside, but I do feel younger as time goes on. It's that vitality. I once heard a young woman on Radio 2 speak about her belief that vitality was only for the young. And I got so furious. I wrote into the programme or emailed them quickly and said, I am 61 and I am more vital now than ever. Um, please let me come on and address this ridiculous statement but I never got anywhere so no, I'm doing this instead <laughs> exactly no I mean I think you have to it's like we were doing a a, a group uh, coaching session with some some interesting people the other day and um, we're looking at how do you get the energy in a group online uh, mm -hmm. right from the start how do you get them to own and and contribute and be part of it mm -hmm. and we decided that we would look at because on my book here which is here you'll see it says uh, you brand a manual 
for confidence, confidence. right? So we looked at the word confidence and said, so what does that mean to everybody? What does it mean to everybody? And everybody owned it immediately and had a different perspective, okay? Well, if, if, if you'd said that the, vi the word vitality and you'd done with that with the word vitality, then you might have got a different uh, understanding sure. because it means different things to different people. Yes. And it's well, not that... necessarily to do with age, of course not, but no. it's not one thing. No, no, confidence is not a single entity. You can break it up quite a lot. When, uh, when I was younger, I always used to say or, or believe that confidence was a matter of how you covered up the lack of it. The what um, bit? The but what that's bit? not being authentic. And I think it takes learning yeah. and experiences and the desire to, to grow to become authentically confident. And it's such a lovely place to be. So your work is super important and, and really really great so jules at 74 yeah um and i yeah yeah <laughs> how do you see the next 20 years of your life well that's that's a very interesting question because i mean there's no doubt that and i don't know how much it's to do with lockdown and everything else but you become much more you have to meet yourself more now than oh i love before. that saying to meet Ever, yourself. You have to meet yourself more now than at any other time because the distraction, the displacement that we have most of our in most of our lives all the time is stopping you doing that most mm -hmm. of the time. I mean, you might be having a very good life and enjoying it and doing really good stuff, but you're not having to confront yourself that much. Mm -hmm. So this has taught me some interesting things about myself mm -hmm. that despite my age and my body saying come on Jules you know slow down a bit I have had to slow down but it hasn't made me happy it hasn't made me think oh I'm ready to hang my hat up now because my body is telling me that I maybe should well my body is telling me I'm bored out of my mind and I'm not feeling very good or healthy simply because I'm not doing yeah so okay. there's a balance between working out who you are more so that you can take that forward, but also having to recognize that I am someone who needs to be doing stuff, achieving things, and then I'm happy. Then I'm happy. Yeah. yeah, it's that driving force, I think, of if you've got something to give, then you need to give it. And I remember you saying, um, having a voice oh can you please tell me that lovely, lovely quote about having a voice and then having a voice is a gift and then using it is a personal responsibility yes. something like that exactly that yeah. i mean i think it was um uh, megan markle who said something which i thought was lovely she came out and said you know all this thing about women need to find their voice and she's saying oh for god's sake women know they they've got a voice they've got a voice it's just how they use it and, yes uh, and, the and how they can use it. get it yeah. out there get it out there and i think that bit is you've got a voice the next bit is your responsibility and commitment mm. to using it and that's, and that's really what i'm doing with, with this mm. um because I, I am so blessed to have such great people in my life and more people obviously coming into my life who who want to appear on this broadcast um and uh and that's i'm i'm a numerology a number two and that's all about communication so i think it's also about finding your way as you go through life um in order to be the best that you can be and give the best that you can give and sometimes it takes us a while to understand that own it and act upon it that's the I mean, that's the point. That's what's so very interesting that's come through just recently is that the statistics on successful startup entrepreneurial businesses mm. are people um, from 45. OK, OK. So the, that... Because the consistency and the resilience and the ability to keep at it and bring all your experience to it is me because you're in a more mature place, but also 
you just have the energy, but also you have the will, you have the motivation, you have the need. When you're younger, you might have all those things or think you have all those things, but they have no experience of the path that's going to be, you know, the things that are going to come up in front of them and whether mm. they can deal with it or not. Mm. When you're that age on, you know you can or you can't. Mm. Um, so I think that's uh, very interesting. I was once um, told that... Um, I can't remember if it's persistence or perseverance was the highest form of intelligence. And I think maybe as we do mature, we are perhaps more able to persevere. My God, setting up this broadcast, talk about a steep learning curve, but it wasn't a learning curve like that. The learning curve was steeply upwards, but it had so many bends exactly. in it. And why, why, and why did you feel motivated to do it? There's something in you that's driving yeah. that. So all yeah. the things that come up that are challenging and scary and oh, everything, you go, oh, shit, I'll just do it. I'll just do yes, it. Yes, yes, fuck it. <laughs> and think of all the women, think of all the women now who are getting to the place in their sort of post-50, as you I know your program's about, I'm doing something with someone at the moment called, uh, to do, it's called age diversity. It's something yeah. he's starting up. And you think post 50, look at the power and the energy and the experience that women have. Yeah. And, and now they're beginning system. to think they can use it. Yes. So may I please have either one strong takeaway that you'd love to give our audience or three top tips Okay, <clears throat> so I'm assuming that, well, I don't know this, is most of the, are most of the audience going to be made up of women or will there be men as well? It's really mostly women, I think, who will be attracted to this. Um, yeah. But far away with what you think is going to be useful. Okay, I think the ability to find your truth and that means you have to almost, in a way, walk around talking to yourself out loud. Oh, I love doing that. <laughs> out loud. Yes. Talk about, ask yourself questions, talk about yourself, get them into words, and then start to think about how you would bring the energy and the projection into that. Because once you do that, it works on it, it feeds on itself. Okay. So you having the ideas and the thoughts and the little quiet conversation now actually speak it out look in the okay. mirror as you're doing it and the other thing is when you're on the phone or anything like that you've got your mobile to your look and look at yourself in the mirror Ooh. are you being congruent okay so what you're okay. saying so if i'm on the phone i'm going yeah yeah okay well i'm yeah i'm really excited about doing that no that'd be good look in the mirror and see what your face is doing okay. it's not giving the right message because all you're hearing is this you're not listening to the words, you're just recognizing the, uh, the behavior and the mood that you're, you're seeing, which means we're getting very confused messages. Okay. I, I remember hearing once that um, if you've got an important phone call to make, stand up. Yes, yeah, stand up, walk about, do all that, bring energy to it and start to really listen and become much more aware mm. of what you're saying, how you're saying it and why you're saying it. Mm. Mm. And the, 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 the little, little package that I can give people is this, right? Twice the energy, half the pace, using pause and emphasis to modulate. Do that everywhere you go, whether you're on Zoom or whether you're on the phone or anything else, just get that awareness in there. So you keep the, you get into the performance zone. So you're using the energy that allows you infinite variety of tone and pace and intention. Amazing. I also remember three little words that you said to me when we did a little bit of work together, uh, because sometimes enthusiasm makes us get carried away. We just want to blurt it all out. And I can remember you going, let it land let it land which yeah. is a wonderful saying and very easy to remember remember to and that's basically using pause and emphasis so you're letting you're saying something giving it clear intention so which is the word that you want to uh, to, to connect with mm. in that sentence mm -hmm. if you hit on it so i did that i hit on the word hit 
you've bought yourself time, which means the meaning and the understanding can land. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so helpful, Jules. Thank you. Um, I'm a great believer in the power of music to affect our mood. And I've asked every guest, uh, because I love music, it's seen me through my life and supported me and, and lifted me. So I've asked every guest to choose a song that lifts or empowers you. So may we have your choice, please? My choice which is not something anyone would necessarily mm, think about choosing for a, an interview is yeah. Kathleen Ferrier singing Blow the Wing, Blow the Wind Southerly. Now, oh. the reason is for that is that A, I'm a Southern girl, <laughs> I come from Sussex, but her voice is so unique and so beautiful and so simple and clear, and its projection is wonderful. And it sums up an awful lot of how I believe the work is, the work that mm. I do and we mm. do. But also my mother used to sing it. She was the most beautiful singer. Oh. It brings everything back. So if you play it, I'll probably cry. Uh, I won't play it now. I'm going to, to, to put it and obviously people will understand the reasons from uh, you speaking about it, which is really lovely. Uh, Jules, thank you so much for sharing thank you. such wisdom with such warmth and generosity as well. And some of the naughty stories you can have later. Okay, we will look forward to those because we don't only really have to do this once, you know, we can no. we go on, we can, because <laughs> each season will I'm have a different to, emphasis. I'm supposed to be writing a memoir at some point. Yes, <laughs> I do, oh because my I God. know when I say that, it will be. Yeah. It will be such fun. And I know that it will be colorful. Because that's how I see you and your beautiful home Thank is just know. like full of treasures, but they all mean something. Um, so the energy in your home is, is as gorgeous as the energy within you. you and in much. fact, um, so um, our lovely audience, for more inspiration and ideas on how to live a truly spirited life, just press subscribe. There's lots of useful information alongside this broadcast. So do take a look. So stay fabulous, stay well, and we'll see you again soon. And I just leave you with one more quote? Oh, please do. Be yourself. Everyone else is taken. Yes, I love that. <laughs> if you enjoyed this broadcast, please remember to like and subscribe. And to enjoy fabulous extra value, just click the link to our membership page.